Hey everyone and welcome back to my channel for another acrylic painting tutorial. If you're new here, I'm Joni Young and today I'm going to teach you guys all how to paint the spider web and fuchsia basket. This was sent in by Linda on Patreon. Thank you so much, Linda, for submitting your photo. I'm really excited to share this one with you guys today. This is something different and you're going to learn a lot of different tips and techniques today. So go ahead and hit that subscribe and feel free to join Patreon for more. I'm going to be using the following colors. I'll have a full list down below in the description box as well. Starting off with titanium white, neon rose, light olive green, sap green, cobalt blue, Mars black, and crimson red. The first thing I want to do is just work on the background. So I'll be just building up some blurry foliage in the background. We don't want everything in full focus. I talk about this a lot in my landscape tutorials. Uh, well, and it goes for any anything you're painting, really. You want to choose one or two things to have um, pop off the canvas and be a little bit more in detail. So choose what speaks to you in the photo that you're rendering or that you want to uh, be the focal point. And then everything else can be a little bit less detailed, softer uh, in tones and blurrier. So um, the focal point for this painting is going to be uh, the water spout, the basket, and a spider web. I thought this would be a really interesting uh, tutorial. I've never painted anything like this before. And that's what I really like about um, accepting your photo requests and submissions on Patreon. It gives me a chance to get out of my comfort zone and challenge myself. So the first thing I wanna do is work on that foliage in the background. Before I do that, I'm gonna add a little bit of a fine mist of water to my canvas. It'll help me blend my acrylics easier. Okay, so I'm just gonna, with my number 20 flat brush, this is from my line of paint brushes. I have a five piece set of brushes. They recently sold out, but um, with popular demand, we will be probably re-releasing them again. So if you didn't get them the first time, hopefully you'll get a chance to get these the second time around. Okay, so now that this is evenly wet, you don't want any drips on there at all, I'm just gonna take some of my sack green, a little bit of black, a little bit of blue, and I'm just gonna go kind of crisscross here. I'm gonna leave a little scoop, kind of like this for our sun and sunlight coming in. That's where our light source is coming from. Get the top of the canvas there, as well as the side. And I'm just going to turn my brush like this and just start tapping for a little bit more texture for the trees back there. I'll pull in again, beautiful sap green, cobalt blue, I'm going to pull this way. We've got a row of trees back here. We don't need to be super detailed about, but as long as we just, just simply pull like that, we get an instant forest. Then I'm going to go across this way. I'm going to pick up a little bit more of my sap green. And then I'm going to take a little bit of white, light olive green, and pull some of that over like that. Okay, the next brush I'm going to be using is my one inch mop brush. It's dry. I'm just going to load my brush up, light olive green, some sap green, light little taps, not too, too much paint. And we're just going to start tap, tap, tapping. Take a little bit of white in there. Add a little bit more. A little gentle little flicks here along the side. For the next layer, I'm going to get actually just a little bit more of my light olive green. 
I'll also be uh, releasing um, my own line of paints in collaboration with Craftimo um, by Christmas of 2023. So stay tuned for that. I'll be um, creating them together with Craftimo. Um, all the paint colors that I use and that you see in my tutorials uh, all the time. So I'm really excited about that and I can't wait to share that with you guys. I'm going to use um, my mop brush again. It's dry and clean. And I'm going to take a little bit more of my light olive green and white. I'm going to add some sunlit highlights here. A little bit more white. Really want to feel the light. That's what it's all about. This painting, you just feel that morning sunlight. Tap a little bit in here. Gently pull down. Remember, we don't want to have full detail of the trees. We just want to be able to feel light and shadow and know that it's a forest back there. Just a little highlight there as well. Okay, the next color I'm going to take is my phthalo blue, or not phthalo blue, cobalt blue and sap green. And I'm going to come along the edge here tap, tap, this is just for another little tree that's off on the side, and then we're going to come in here and add our shadows, pull across, And then up, down. Make sure you remember to rinse your brushes out. I'm gonna go over to my Filbert brush and I wanna make this look a little, uh, a little blurrier because I don't want it to be the focal point. So I'm just gonna Gently smush around the edges here. I want it to feel a little blurrier. And just by doing that, I think we've achieved that a little bit more out of focus look. Okay, down here, I'm going to add another little shadow because we've got a pretty little garden arbor we're going to add as well. Such a lovely and charming photo that I, I feel so grateful that I get sent these photos from you guys and you want me to paint them. You guys are such excellent photographers. Okay, so just a few little lines on an angle like this. Okay, and then the next thing I'm going to do is take my black with a little bit of my crimson red and we'll make sort of a dark fudgy brown color. Okay, and then I'm going to add two lines here. And then one really close is going to have four lines that come down. The ones in the back are a little shorter and they're really close together. Maybe a little thicker at the base. And then just a little line at the bottom, the base there. And 
it will just be a little, just a little stone walkway. So I'm gonna add just a little bit of white in here with that crimson and black. Look at that nice color we get. And we'll just kind of slide our brush side to side, keeping with that diagonal. So it's just maybe a little rock slate or stone path that leads around to the other side of the house. We'll add a few strips, little flicks here and dabs there of um, the white. Okay, so for the top, we're going to mix up some more black and red. A little thicker there and top little angle on either side comes out farther so diagonal diagonal and then across just like that and then we're gonna go dab 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 take a little bit of white Go across again, just on the top for some highlights, and then dab, dab, dab. Okay, so just a little something like that. So the next thing I'm going to do is work on part of the lower portion of the house first because it's in the it's behind the front part here that's going to be this strip of crimson red and black but I'm going to emphasize more on the crimson red for that area there. It's going to tie in nicely with all the green. Okay so I'm first of all just going to take I'll just take black first and Start from, let's line it up with the top of this arbor and we'll just, we're going to go over this area anyways. We're going to pull down all the way off just above the canvas. Then we've got a diagonal line there and another board that's thicker right here. Kind of round, scoop out this corner. Okay, and then we're just gonna take our black and paint this portion in right here. my brush out and just clean up some lines while I wait for this to dry I'm gonna go over here and add a little bit more green 
and blue, greens and blues. And I'm just gonna turn my brush over like this. I just wanna make sure that I don't have any blank canvas showing. I have a nice dark foliage green base here. And then I'm going to come right down here and add a little bit of dark green as well. Just get this area covered here, make sure there's no white spots showing. Okay, now I'm going to dry this off and then we'll come in with the a lighter tone um, of the boards here and then we'll come in with some shingles. Okay for the boards I'm going to use my number 20 flat brush. I'm going to take white, light olive green, and some red. A little bit more white in there. This will give us somewhat of a orangey, warm tone. Almost like a shade of yellow ochre. Okay, so we'll work that paint towards the end of our brush. I'm gonna come along the edge here, come right down. Paint those in. And add a little bit of white for a highlight on the tops. add a little highlight on these as well. And I'm just going to slide into my white here. And then we've got a really bright glare happening. There must be a little bit of metal right here that makes it really bright. You take a little bit of black, red. With a little bit of a shadow. A little scoop. Loop and scoop down in the corner, pull up. The next brush I'm going to be using is a number 10 small flat brush. This is uh, for the shingles. I'm going to get my brush just a little bit wet. And I'll take some of this light yellow ochre color that we made. And we'll start at the, the bottom first.
pull those shingles on a slant. Load your paint up again on the tip of your brush. And then we'll start the next layer. I have a little one here. And then so on and so on. Doesn't have to be perfect. back with a little bit extra white You can come in and add some lines in between those shingles. If you're not left with enough black underneath and you happen to go over it like I did, I'm going to take a little bit more black and red. I'm going to just pull it up from here and add a little post. Okay, so the next thing I want to do is come in with my beam across the top and the water spouts and then the red and then we'll paint the basket after. I'm going to take my number 20 flat brush, a little bit of black and red. And we're going to go all the way to here. all the way across pick up just a little bit more red And a little bit of that blue as well with that red and black and then we're going to come right down here pick up a little bit of water help work that paint out of my brush 
Sometimes there's a lot of pain in the brush. You just need a little help releasing it. here and tidy up this line pull some of that off straighten some of that out it's easy to do that when the paint is a little wet still Run my brush up again and then we've got our water spout comes down like this. That's kind of fun. Loop over and then straight down. Over and down. I'll make it just a little thicker. Okay, then I'm going to take crimson red, a little bit of water, and pull that in. along the side. Okay, so I just dried this off a little bit. Um, I'm going to uh, leave this for a minute and hop over to this section here. I'm going to take my flat brush. It's a little bit wet from rinsing it out. And I'm going to take some white, a little bit of blue, mix it up, work it out of my brush. So there's hardly any, and it's more of a dry brush now. And we're just going to Start coming over here and adding some morning mist and fog in this area. Isn't that cool? And it's so, so easy to do. I'm going to rinse my brush out. I'm going to go back over to my little flat brush. It has a little bit of water on it. I'm going to take some of that light soft blue and I'm going to come down about that much from the edge here. Pull right down the center. We're going to give this highlight And then a little on the edge here. A little in here. On the top. And right underneath here.
we'll soften this edge right there by adding just a little bit over, a little bit of mist and light on the edge there as well. Continue with highlight here, highlights. Oh, that area must have been a little bit wet still. I'll just take some of that off. And I'm kind of just scumbling over this because it was it's really bright and kind of almost like sparkling. You know when you get a glare off of a piece of metal? That's what's happening right in this area here. Whoops. So I only got some of my neon rose in there. Pretty color, but that's not where I want it. <laughs> titanium light out. And I'll redab the center here. I just mixed up a little more red and light olive green. Pull that through for a little bit of warmth. Okay, I'm going to come over to my black and red again. I'm going to go inside. Dab, dab, dab. Connect them with a little line just to give it a little more shadows. I'm going to add a little bit of both greens on the corner of my brush. And there's something kind of climbing some plants down here that are growing around the base of each of these posts. So I'll just add a little bit like that. Clean my brush out. Take some white, my light olive green, and we'll add some sunlight on the leaves. A little bit more white. Next color, some, let me get some clean blue out because mine's mixed in with my black a little bit too much. And it's hard to tell, maybe some little lawn ornaments in the reference photo, but when I first looked at it, I saw some little flowers. So I'm gonna take white neon rose 
and blue. And we're just going to add a little dab here, here, and here. Just a little something like that. And then I'm also going to add a little bit of that pretty violety color down the edge here. And come in with my blue and black. green. That'll help make it show up a little bit better. Okay, I think we're ready to start working on our um, Our spider web here and I'm just gonna use my little round brush number three some white a little bit of water and it's gonna be connected to this water spout it's gonna be in this area here so I'm gonna start with a little wobbly sort of circle in the center And then we're just going to add some lines. Make sure you go back to reload your brush. Add some extra white where I want it to be a little bit brighter. You don't want to space them out super even. You want to have some lines closer together. Let's call it like, let's call it a pie. Say you want to cut pieces of the pie. You don't want them, in this case, this pie to all have the same sizes of slices. Now the next brush I'm going to be using is my Wisp fan. I found it. It's right here. So it looks like a fan brush. But then there's sections cut out of it to make skinnier lines. So it's like a bunch of little liner brushes in the shape of a fan. So the idea is that we're going to scoop, 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 and make a really simple instant spider web. So you just want to use a little bit of water and white. Scoop, scoop. Super easy.
And then I'll take a little bit extra white where we have more light hidden right here. Make these lines a little thicker and brighter. Now you'll see in the reference photo that there is another spider web down here. However, I thought that would make the painting a little bit too busy. I wanted to focus on one spider web and a, a flower basket right here. So that's why if you're if you're wondering and looking at the reference photo why I did that, that's why. Okay, now we can start working on our flower basket. I'm going to just go over this first before we start our basket with black and red. Now that this is drying, I want to come in and add a little bit more of a highlight right in there. Okay, so the flower basket is a little in shadow, so I'll just kind of take these colors here, a little bit of blue, black, green, white, and make just a muted taupe color. And it's going to be halfway on the red and halfway on that black. And we'll just create a little rectangle like this. I'm only gonna see a little portion of this basket. We're gonna add a little bit more white in here just to make sure that it doesn't dry see through and it still might because we have a dark, dark base. Okay, so to start, we're going to use a mop brush. I've just got a one inch here. You can also use um, the sap green and cobalt blue. You can also use a filbert or a smaller mop brush. And we're just going to start tapping over the edges all the way off the canvas. Have it draping down a little bit. Tap some up here, over here, over the spout. We take some white and some light olive green, and we're going to add some light coming in here. Okay, just like that. Rinse my brush out. Next brush I'm going to use is my number three round again. I'm going to take some white, some of my sap green, and I'm going to push, let off, push. To make some lighter shades within all these shadows and remember it it's going to dry a little bit darker so we want to be left with some green we don't want it to be all or want them to be all kind of black and 
end up looking too flat. I'm just going to add a few little dabs here. Gonna round out that board or post right here. Okay, now I'm gonna take just a little bit of white and light green and we're gonna have some skinny little flower stems coming down. For our fuchsias. Okay, I'm gonna take a little bit of white, a little bit of white and that neon rose, no water. I'm going to pull a little stem down again, just lightly go over that. I'm going to go out on either side. We're just going to sort of create a little arch around like that, and then a little circle inside, and then a few little lines. Then I'm going to take full strength neon rose, go inside, and then add a few little lines right there. Okay, I'm going to do the same over here. For here, I'm just going to, these ones haven't, some of them have opened up, some of them are still kind of budding. Little push, smush circle, and a little line. Ones will dry darker. We want them to because it's more uh, in shadow on this side. I'm going to take a little bit of white. Just want to feel the light of this one. So if we take it a little bit darker by mixing some green and blue with the neon rose and add a little bit right there, that'll give us a little bit more of a glow as well. And then a few more leaves here and there. Can't forget the hanger. So I'm just going to take a little bit of white and black and there's like a chain hanging here. Take a little bit more white. I'm going to add these little loops and then we can have a hook and the hanger for the basket. I'm going to add a little bit of black.
few more leaves. What a joy this has been to paint. I want to thank Sarah again and everybody out there who's continuing to send me your photos on Patreon to render. There's a link below where you can join us for as little as $5 a month. And you can then unlock many full length tutorials longer than the ones you see on YouTube. There's a lot of exclusive content there that won't ever be on YouTube. Plus, um, I mail you out a 5x7 print or handwritten uh, greeting card, and you can also submit your photos. Uh, so just if you join, please send me a message and I'll give you the info on Patreon how you can submit those photos. I want to wish you guys a wonderful day. Thank you so much for all your support and taking the time to watch my tutorials. I hope you're learning a lot and getting inspired. Be sure to leave a comment or question below this video if you have one. I always look forward to hearing from you. Uh, and take care and I'll see you all soon in my next video. Bye!